I currently run 8700K with a 3080 Ti FE. I suspect this to be a bottleneck. Which CPU would you advise to upgrade to? URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. Lex, your rogue's answer before I give mine. Well, my answer would be, what's your use case? What are you doing? What are you not doing? How many monitors do you have? What resolution? What specific games are you playing? What do you want to play? Because without that information, it might be fine or it might not be. That's my answer. That's a good answer. What's your answer? If you'd asked me two months ago, I would have said an i7-12700K. As we get closer to the summer, I'm inclined to say wait for the i7-13700K because that may come as soon as August and we're in March right now. And so mm -hmm. April, May, June, July, August. Can you wait five months? So, I don't know. How much of an upgrade are you itching for? Yeah, and what are your expectations? I mean, you bought a six core CPU, so are you an i5? Well, I guess that's an i7, is it? Are you an i7 kind of person? Are you wanting Nobody more? should be an i5 person. No, I know. Well, that's an i5 person now, today. Soon to be an i3 person. So, there is lots of information you have not given us to give you a good answer on that. The 12700K is the deal. The 13700K will probably also be the deal come when it launches later this year. Do you have anything else to say about that? Uh, let's see. Long Your answer was good. You like my answer? So, well, why are people answering that? Mark got back with us. Yes. Mark says mainly gaming, light video editing, programming, compile coding, uh, two by 1440p monitors. Mainly wanted to upgrade to future proof as the 8700K was bought on launch. We are entering a world where future proofing isn't going to be a thing. And gaming, I mean, are you talking GTA 5 or are you talking cyberpunk and everything yet to come? If he's getting frame stutters, it isn't, it isn't GTA 5 because that'll run GTA 5 fine. I understand. I will say this. He used the word future-proofing. I traditionally am a fan of buying a grade up from where you otherwise would have bought. The i7 that's going to launch later this year is faster than the current i9. The i7 that's the i5 that's going to launch in June of next year will be faster than the current i9. Correct. Most likely, we'll see, but most likely, if the two hundred and fifty dollar chip in fifteen months beats the six hundred dollar chip from today, the term future proofing is going to fall apart in a real big hurry. Yeah. Because three years from now. But that's why you say buy the most that you can afford and hold on to it. I don't like the value of the 12900K, though I think it's going to age very poorly. The 13900K with 24 cores might be okay, but if you were going to buy Alder Lake, October called six months ago and, and exactly. once you purchase. Exactly. You're, do you realize that we're potentially more than 50% through Alder Lake's life already? Yep. So many people are not prepared for the speed that this is going to hit them over the next five years. You are going to get more product launches and more iterations and more IPC boosts than you have seen in a decade. The next five years will have more yeah. than the past 10 did. Mm -hmm. And to everybody who goes, well, I'm just going to buy this and it'll last me eight years. You are deluding yourself. If you need something now, buy it now. If you don't, wait. But then you wait and then you wait some more and then you wait and you wait. At some point, you 
buy something. Future proofing worked to a point in the later half of the 2010s. When I did the video in 2016 on which CPU you should buy, and I talked about why the i7-6800K was worth the $150 cost increase over the i7-6700K, and the i5 was dumb and nobody should buy it, and AMD wasn't even part of the conversation. In fact, in one of those videos, I made two different videos talking about it because this was early in my YouTube career and the first one wasn't very good. And so I made a better, longer version with, I addressed some of the issues and cleaned it up a bit. I, I talked about the CPUs. I had the i5-6600K, I had the i7-6700K and the i7-6800K. Okay. Now, quick refresher for those of you who don't remember. This was Skylake, which launched in 2015. I was months before the 7th gen KB Lake would come out. Yep. That was then. But at the time I made those videos in the summer, the 6000 series was the current series. The 6700K i7, four cores, eight threads on the Z170 motherboard. The 6800K was six cores, 12 threads, on the X99 motherboard, not 299, which is the current one, it was X99, LGA 1100, LG, no, uh, LGA 2011, 2011, whereas yeah. two, X299 is LGA 2066. Man, this stuff's confusing. Yeah, it is. So, <clears throat> and I do this for a living. Can you imagine how confusing it is if you don't do this stuff for a living? Yeah, it's like poor George up here. He's a, wait, is Otter Lake 13th gen Intel? I'm so out of loop. No, Alder Lake is 12th gen. 13th gen is Raptor Lake. Raptor Lake is 13th gen. And then... Next year is Meteor Lake, which is 14th gen. And then Arrow Lake. No. Isn't it Arrow and then Lunar? Didn't they start? I thought it was Lunar, then Arrow. Whatever. In 15 months, we'll already be on 14th gen. So, yeah. Um... If you had in 2016 followed my advice, because I, I priced it out and I put all the text up on the screen, I talked about the numbers, I said, look, CPU, motherboard, cooler. This price for the four core, eight thread, 6700K. I said, if you were otherwise inclined to buy an i7, if you're an i7 person, the cost difference between this Z170 board this four core, eight thread, 6700K chip and a decent cooler and the price difference between this X99 motherboard and the i7-6800K and a decent cooler is about $150. It was a hundred bucks for the chip and about 50 bucks more for the motherboard looking at par to par. I had two Asus motherboards. Mm -hmm. So for $150, you got 50% more cores and 50% more threads, six cores, 12 threads. I got a lot of complaints at the time. I've gotten complaints my entire YouTube channel's history from people, oh, you people don't need that many cores, that's dumb. Don't you know gaming doesn't need all those cores? In fact, a lot of people are like, an i5 is all you need for gaming. I get a lot of comments today from people who said, you know, I listened to other reviewers five years ago and they all said i5 was all you need for gaming. And my i5-6600K didn't last worth a damn. I had to replace that thing Even so 6, fast. 6700K. No, 66. Yeah, I know, but... Four cores, four threads, no hyper-threading. It aged like spilled milk. But back in 2016, a lot of tech reviewers were parroting the i5 is all you need for gaming. Yeah, but there's you're, you do more than your computer than just game. With respect, too many tech reviewers benchmark for a living and don't... But I like what someone said um, last stream is that watch the gameplay footage with the numbers on the screen. That will give you a more real number than the benchmark numbers give you. This is true. But usually those... PCs that they're playing the game on are still clean. Clean test benches versus dirty test benches is so, is so different. So even though it is giving you gameplay footage, it's still on a clean. It wouldn't be ideal today, but if you had bought a 6800K back in 2016, six years ago, yep. it's still functional today. Six cores, 12 threads is kind of what people are recommending today. A lot of a lot of tech reviewers and a lot of channels and Reddit and Twitter and a lot of places, uh, six cores is all you need for gaming. 
Okay. You know, a Ryzen 5 5600X or an i5-12400 is absolutely faster than a i7-6800K. But that's mostly just frame rates on super premium graphics cards mm -hmm. at low resolutions. And I see this all the time where somebody goes, yeah, but a 5600X is faster than an, than an 7700K or faster than an older chip. What'd you test it with? Uh, RTX 2080 Ti. So people who buy Ryzen 5s and i5s are using 2080 Ti's now, are they? That's interesting. I just saw a review. We covered this three days ago. Of the i3. The new i3-12300. And they tested it with a 2080 Ti. Now I know why they do it. They do it to remove the graphics card from the, the testing parameters. It, it's to make it a CPU test. Although it still wasn't. There were several games like Borderlands 3 on there that were still pretty much graphics card bound. But they were running a 2080 Ti at 1080p on an i3. And then they used those results to say, oh, wow, see, look how great this is. If any of you put a 2080 Ti in an i3 to play at 1080p, you need to be smacked upside the head. Seriously. That is dumb, with a capital D. Thank you so much, capital D. Here's the truth. Those results, pretty meaningless. They're not at all what anybody should be doing with that chip. Now, if you test at 1080p with a 3050 or a 3060 or a 2060 or a 1660 Super or a 6600, uh, or a 5600 XT, fine. I'm cool with that. 2080 Ti's today, we just looked them up on the live stream, are going for a thousand bucks. Benchmarking aside, who cares how the card runs at 1080p with a thousand dollar video card? The CPU, a hundred and twenty dollar CPU and a thousand dollar video card. I mean, please just take me out behind the barn and just put me out of my misery for all the stupid that is. No, it needs to get taken out, not you. Oh, I, I just don't want to suffer from hearing it anymore. Now, I did do that in the early days of the channel. But some of the best videos I've done were, were when I tested all three resolutions. Yeah, 1080p. And I started doing that in 2018 and 2019. I started doing that. Mm. And I then got complaints from people saying, what are you testing at 4K for? That's only a GPU benchmark. If you're buying $1,000 video cards, odds are you're at least playing at 1440p, if not at 4K. When the, uh, when the Alder Light came out, the i5-12600K, mm -hmm. I benchmarked it at 1440p. I know you did. And there are at least a dozen comments under that video going, dude, you don't know what you're doing. You're supposed to test at 1080p to show CPU performance. I used a 3080. These are $300 CPUs on $250 motherboards with $1,200 at the time dollar video cards. Actually, no, that was October. Those are $1,500 video cards. I understand the science. If, if you're buying 3080s and spending over $500 on your motherboard and CPU and you're playing at 1080p, you lost the plot. Badly. Good 27 inch 1440p 144 hertz monitors are 300 bucks. Ditch there. If you've got two grand to buy motherboard, CPU, and video card, you have 300 bucks to buy a decent bloody monitor. <laughs> what do you want to add to what I just said? Because I'm just beside myself. Uh, let's invite people to balance their PC build. How about we say that? If you have 
a certain monitor, you need a certain PC. If you have a certain use case, build your PC to your use case. Done. URCD Keys is the best source for genuine Windows 10 and Office Professional product keys that work the first time, every time. Get 20% off normal prices using our discount code BST for Bite Size Tech and the link in the video description below. $15 gets you a Windows 10 Professional OEM key that is a real product key, activates directly with Microsoft, use it forever as it links to your Microsoft account and it works through reinstalls. Get a full copy of Office 2019 Professional Plus for about $50 that redeems at setup.office.com using your Microsoft account. It also works forever through reinstalls. We have been using URCD keys for almost three years now and recommend you do so as well.